as Beauregard Jackson, beau to his friends and family, sat at a cafe table waiting for his cousin Mary Jane, he wondered what was going on in his life with Bobby Jean, his wife of two years. She had told him something last night that had completely baffled him, and he had hoped that Mary Jane, or MJ, as everyone called her, could help him figure it out. Bo wasn't stupid or anything, he was just a simple country boy who lived by simple rules, one of which was that husband and wife should be a team working towards the same goal. He may have been too gullible, or at worst, naive about modern realities, but he was not stupid. He knew Bobby Jean, or BJ, all through school, and they started dating during their senior year. Like all the boys in their small town, Bo had few options after high school. Go to college, find a low-paying job in the city, or join the army. Without money for college and not wanting to work as a blue-collar worker all his life, he decided to join the Marines. He and BJ had talked about getting married, but decided to wait until he had served four years in the Corps. At this time, she went to college as her parents had some financial means. After his service, most of which he spent in such resort places as Iraq and Afghanistan, he returned home. They got married even though everyone, including MJ, warned him that BJ had changed over the past four years. But blinded by love, or perhaps lust, he ignored the warnings and married her. Looking at her beautiful smiling face and her sexy body, he couldn't believe that this wasn't the same girl he knew in school. He went to work at his uncle's feed store, loading trucks and making deliveries, while taking night classes at the local college on computers and networking, figuring the VA benefits he'd earned in the Corps should be put to good use. Of course, he knew that at this rate, it would take him time to complete his education. He saved enough money during his service to make a good down payment on a small house for himself and BJ and bought the house immediately after his return. BJ loved the house and immediately began giving it a feminine touch from the moment it walked her through the door. In the meantime, she took a job at a local law firm, working as a paralegal and earning decent money for their area. She suggested that he let her take care of the finances so he could focus on his studies, but he refused the idea. I'm the husband and it's my responsibility to take care of us, he said. Luckily, his earnings at the feed store were enough to cover all the bills and her income went toward things like food, furniture, and anything else she might need for the house. In the first year, everything seemed good. They got along and enjoyed sex almost every day. They decided to put off having children until he finished his studies and started working for one of the large firms in Springfield. But over time, he began to notice slight changes in BJ. She started going out on Fridays with the girls, supposedly for drinks to unwind after the week. Then Friday outings began to happen more often, sometimes two or three times a week. To make matters worse, she didn't get home until two in the morning and immediately ran to the shower. He smelled cigarette smoke on her clothes, and sometimes he caught another smell, but he couldn't figure out what it was. Bo often stopped by BJ's office to take her to lunch, but for some reason she was never there. It seemed like every time he came in, she was outside with one of the lawyers handling client cases. Whenever he mentioned it, she brushed it off and didn't take his complaints seriously. Then her firm hired Ryan Wallace, a flamboyant and well-connected lawyer from the East. In their wise decision, Ryan was paired with BJ, and suddenly she had to travel almost every other weekend to meet with out-of-town clients. Or at least that's what she said. Sometimes she was in Little Rock or Memphis or St. Louis. Several times she was gone for a whole week in New York, Boston, Miami, or Washington, D.C. At first she called him every night, and they had wild sex when she returned. Then calls became rare, as did sex. Now he was lucky if they did it once or twice a week. Her way of dressing also changed. At first, she wore either pantsuits or conservative dresses that covered her knees. Now her skirts are quite short, and he began to notice underwear in her suitcases that he had never seen before, and one day he found a tiny club skirt that barely covered her. Her attitude towards him also changed. At first, she was proud of her Marine veteran husband, who worked all day and studied at night. 
Now she almost never spoke to him without making sarcastic remarks. Then there was the conversation they had last night in bed. He was still trying to understand its meaning. His thoughts were interrupted by the sound of MJ approaching the table. She sat down opposite him with a cup of coffee and snapped her fingers to get his attention. Hey, cousin, what's so important that you had to drag me out of the office? She asked. She worked as a manager at his uncle's feed store office, so he saw her every day, but he wanted to talk to her outside the office to avoid rumors. I need to talk to you alone, he said, and I don't want Uncle Les or others to know about my personal problems. Yes, I somehow realize that something has been gnawing at you for some time now, she said. Don't tell me, let me guess, it's about BJ, right? Yes, how did you guess, he asked. It's easy, she said. It's written all over your face. What is she doing now? That's the thing, Bo said. I really don't know. I think she's cheating on me, but I can't prove it. I'm sorry to hear that, Bo, she said. I knew she would be a problem. Yes, you all told me that, but I didn't want to believe it, he said. Well, tell me, cousin, what's going on, she asked. That's something she told me last night, Bo said. I don't know what to think about this, and I was hoping you could help me figure it out. What did she say? MJ asked. She said something about wanting me to be her cuckold, Bo said quietly. He didn't know the meaning of the word and seemed puzzled. That bitch, MJ spat. Do you know what it means? No, I don't know, Bo said. What is it? She wants to sleep with other men and wants your permission, MJ said. Bo's eyes widened as her words sank in. Oh no, he said. I don't understand. Why does she want to do this to me? He asked. Because she's a nasty bitch, MJ said. What else did she say? She said she wanted to maybe tie me up so I could watch, Bo said. MJ's face turned red, partly from embarrassment and partly from anger. It didn't make sense at the time, but after what you said, I think I understand. I hope so, cousin, said MJ. You need to gather evidence against her and divorce her quickly before she makes good on her threats. How will I do this? Bo asked. Listen, you need to talk to cousin Mike, MJ said. Mike, another cousin of both MJ and Bo, was a private investigator who often did favors for the family, which covered quite a few people in the town. Tell him what you told me. He'll know what to do. Bo nodded his head tears streaming down his face. MJ took his hand in hers. She loved him and her heart ached for him. Everything will be okay, Bo, she said. You can stay with me if you need to. He looked at her. Thank you, MJ, he said. I might do that. BJ is going to Chicago for the weekend again, so I'll be fine until Monday. Okay, Bo, she said. You know my door is always open for you. Anytime, just be careful and don't do anything stupid, you understand me? I don't want to bail you out of jail. I'll be careful, Bo said. Okay, MJ said, standing up. Take the rest of the day free. I'll tell Uncle Les that you need to attend to personal matters. We're already done for today anyway. She leaned over and kissed his cheek. She hated seeing him like this and was determined to do whatever it took to help him get through it. Bo nodded his head and watched her walk away, her ass swaying in her short jean shorts. Whoever ends up with her will be lucky, he thought. He took out his phone and called Mike, who answered the first call. Jackson Detective Agency, Michael speaking, he said. Mike, this is Bo. Do you have a few minutes? Bo asked. Hey, Bo. Yeah, I think I can find time for you, he said, laughing. Do you want to come in now? Yes, said Bo if you don't mind. No problem, Mike said. I'll put out fresh coffee for you. Thank you, Bo said. I will be right back. Bo ended the call, paid the bill, and hopped into his pickup truck. Mike's office was on the other side of the small town, and he got there in a few minutes. He walked into the office and shook his cousin's hand. What happened, Bo? Mike asked as he poured him a cup of coffee. I have a problem with BJ and I need answers, he said. Is it true? Mike asked. I thought you were doing well. Yeah, me too, Bo said. He explained everything he knew to Mike. 
Mike took notes as he listened, pausing only a couple of times to ask a follow-up question. When are she and Ryan going to town again? Mike asked. This Friday, Bo said. Tomorrow, they're going to Chicago. Mike looked at his calendar. Well, what a coincidence, Mike said. I also need to be in Chicago this weekend on business. Say, cousin, let me know where she'll be staying, and I'll try to make something for you. I'll do that, thanks, Bo said. Besides, Mike said, we could use some cameras and microphones in your house. Is there a way to get in there and set it all up? Yes, you can, Bo said. When would you like to do this? The sooner the better, I think, Mike said. It's Wednesday, we have a day or so before they leave. You never know what you might find out. Bo nodded in agreement. They agreed that Mike would come over with his equipment in the afternoon while BJ was at work. During this time, try to act normal around her. And for God's sake, don't do anything violent or stupid, Mike warned. I know this must cost a lot of money, Bo began, but Mike waved him off. Don't worry about it. Pay when you can, Mike said. We're family, and that's more important. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate it, Bo said. That was one of the advantages of living in such a small town where everyone knew each other. Family and true friends are usually always ready to help others in need. Mike followed Bo to his house and installed motion sensor cameras in the bedrooms and living room, as well as a phone recorder to record all calls. Everything was set up so that the files were saved to a computer that Mike had installed in Bo's office, which was actually an extra bedroom converted for studying. Mike gave Bo a remote to turn off the camera in the master bedroom in case he and BJ decided to have sex, and showed him how to access the video on the computer he had set up. Bo wasn't worried about BJ getting to him because the room was filled with computers and computer parts that he used for his classes and work, and she avoided that room like the plague. After Mike left, Bo studied a little, then took a shower and left for college. When he returned home around 9.30 p.m., BJ was waiting for him in the living room, wearing a short skirt and top. Well, have you thought about what we talked about last night? She asked with a sly smile. Yeah, I've thought about it, Bo said, and I just can't do what you want. Her smile faded. Oh, she said. Why? Don't you think this could be fun? Maybe for you, but not for me, he said. Oh, come on, she said. Don't be such a bore. He looked at her, not recognizing the woman he married. Are you cheating on me, BJ? He asked. She shook her head. No, you know I would never do that to you, she said. I love you. And if you really loved me, you'd let me have a little fun every now and then. So, if I wanted to have some fun with, say, an old friend from school, would you mind watching me have sex with her? He asked. Oh no, she said. That's not how it works. If you even think about cheating on me, I'll divorce you so fast your head will spin. So, let me figure it out, he said. I'm assuming you're talking about Ryan since you're always going away with him. You're saying you're allowed to cheat on me with Ryan, but I'm not allowed to cheat on you with another woman. Is that true? BJ looked nervous. Are you calling me a hypocrite? She finally asked, trying to steer the conversation in a different direction. I'm saying I'm not as stupid as you seem to think, he said. You told me exactly what you want to do, and I'm telling you that if you cheat on me, we're done. BJ took a defensive position. Don't even think about it, boy, she said. I'll take everything from you if you try to divorce me. Her tone suddenly changed. Look, this will just be a one-time thing, just for fun. How about it? Bo shook his head. Not only no, but damn no, he said. I won't allow this. BJ looked at him before standing up. Okay, Bo, she said. We'll talk about this when I get back from Chicago. I'll probably be back on Tuesday. Can you handle it on your own while I'm gone? What do you think I've been doing all this time? He asked. Damn, it looks like you're no longer here than you are. Can you at least tell me where you'll be staying so I don't worry? I think, she said sighing and writing something down on a piece of paper. How about a goodbye kiss, she asked, striking a seductive pose. Bo was not going to refuse such an offer. Damn it, he thought, 
It had been so long since they had sex that he had almost forgotten how she felt. You'll be staying here tomorrow night, won't you? He asked. She shrugged. Maybe, she said. Ryan mentioned something about heading out tomorrow night after work. And you're just telling me this now? Bo asked. You were supposed to leave on Friday until Sunday, and now you're saying you can leave tomorrow and not come back until Tuesday. That's life in this business, she said. You always need to be one step ahead of the rest. Bo followed her into the master bedroom, clicking the remote to turn off the camera. He watched her as she undressed and admired her beautiful body. She took off her clothes, which were very little, and he noticed for the first time that she had completely prepared her body. Wow, he said, looking at her. When did you do this? She smiled as she approached him. Only today, she said. I made this especially for you. Bo didn't believe her, but decided to hell with it. After they calmed down, he kissed her, noticing the same sly smile on her face. I wonder what that means, he thought. She climbed off the bed and ran to the bathroom to clean herself up after he rolled off her. He couldn't help but think that something was wrong, but he couldn't figure out what it was. After she left the bathroom, she went back to bed and fell asleep, kissing him on the cheek. He tried to sleep, but it was very difficult. The next morning she got up early, showered, got dressed, and made coffee and breakfast. He climbed out of bed and performed his morning rituals. He went to the kitchen where BJ was and took a cup of coffee. You're up early, he said, kissing her cheek. Yes, we have an early meeting to prepare for the trip, she said. She handed him a piece of paper with the name of the hotel and room number. That's where I'll be staying. I'll call you when I get there, okay? Don't worry, everything will be fine. But we'll talk more when I get back on Tuesday. She put a couple of eggs and some bacon on a plate and placed it on the table where he usually sat, then took her portion. It looked and smelled delicious, so he sat down and ate it. BJ also sat down and quickly swallowed her food. He had never seen her eat so fast before. After drinking a couple of sips of coffee, she stood up and headed towards the door. I'm leaving, she said. Wish me luck. Don't I deserve a kiss or something before you go? Bo asked. BJ sighed and walked back to the table and gave him a formal kiss on the cheek. Here, she said. I'm leaving. I'll call you when I get to the hotel. Love you. Bye. And so quickly she left. He finished his breakfast, put his plate in the sink, and headed to his office to see what might have been recorded last night. He turned on Mike's computer so his keyboard and mouse controlled the machine. He went to the video folder and found that nothing was recorded from the bedroom. He then switched to another file and found a very long video that started around 5.30 p.m. the previous day while he was at school. In the video, BJ and Ryan had just entered the living room through the front door. As soon as they walked inside, she turned and gave him a passionate kiss. Soon they were naked and kissing on the couch. Is it safe to do this here? What if your beau comes home? Ryan asked. Don't worry about it, honey, she said. He's at school and won't be back until nine o'clock or so. Now take me. Bo paused the video and headed to the bathroom, feeling nauseous. That's why she seemed so different last night, he thought. Damn bitch, he thought. She will answer this. He vomited until he began dry vomiting. After rinsing his mouth, he returned to his office. He played the video and saw the cheaters kissing on the couch. Ryan sat down next to her. Have you talked to him about our plan yet? Ryan asked. BJ nodded. Yes, but he hasn't given an answer yet, she said. He's a little naive about some things, so maybe he doesn't know how to feel about it. Do you think he might have told someone else? Ryan asked. I don't know, she said. The only person he could talk to is his stupid cousin MJ. They've always been very close, and I know she doesn't treat me too well. Ever since we moved here from Little Rock, she considered me a stranger. Oh shit, Ryan said. From what I've seen, all newcomers here are treated that way. I could buy half of this city, and they'd still consider me an outsider, just because I'm from the North. Well, you don't understand, BJ said. I think Bo and MJ had something going on before he and I started dating. 
but you said they were cousins, Ryan said. BJ shook her head. No, they're cousins, so it's technically fine. By law, they can even marry if they want. Heck, almost everyone here is a cousin or second cousin of each other who have been living here for more than a generation, she said. Ryan shook his head, not believing his ears. Damn, he said. Do you think she'll cause us problems? I don't think so, she said. Besides, they're all just stupid rednecks here. What can they do? Maybe you're right, he said. Listen, I'll tell you what, let's go to Chicago early, maybe tomorrow afternoon. We can take the corporate jet and avoid the traffic. There's one show I want to take you to, and then I want to take you to one special one. Club on Friday night. BJ's eyes lit up. A real show? She asked, excited. Ryan nodded his head. And what club is this where you want to take me? A special place where you can show off your beautiful body and everyone can appreciate your talents, if you know what I mean, he said, smiling. She smiled back, hugging him. We'll take another day and come back on Tuesday. I have an idea and we can discuss it later, but if he says no, tell him you'll talk to him about it when you come back on Tuesday. Sounds great, she said. Let's do it. Ryan kissed her deeply. Okay, I need to go home and get ready, he said. I'll see you at the office an hour or two early tomorrow, okay? You got it, lover, she said. Ryan got up and left the house. The video ended after she went to the bathroom. Bo turned off the video, copied it to the flash drive, and checked to see if there were any audio files. Not finding them, he disconnected and returned to his main computer. It was still early, but he felt terrible. He called his uncle Les at home and explained the situation. Damn, boy, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you need to take some time off to deal with this shit? He asked. Yes, Uncle Les, I need it, Bo said. Okay, go ahead, but call MJ. She'll be really worried about you, Les said. Thanks, I'll do that, Bo said. Let's talk later. After ending the call, he dialed MJ's number. She answered the second call. Hi, Bo, she said. Why are you calling so early? Is everything okay? No, cousin, it's not okay, said Bo. I'm taking a vacation. I just talked to Uncle Les, he knows. I have a video I want to show you, and it's not pretty. Do you know any good divorce lawyers? Divorce, she asked. Let me find out, okay? Meet me at lunch and bring everything you have. To the same place. I'll take the laptop with me. I want to see it. Okay, Bo said. Thank you, MJ. Always, Bo, she said. And Bo, I'm so sorry about all of this. I really am. You deserve so much better. Thank you, MJ. You're the best, he said as he ended the call. BJ was right about one thing. He and MJ were very close their entire lives. The old man smiled and called them kissing cousins in those days, and they were more right than anyone knew. He and MJ would often sneak out for a quick kiss, or sometimes go skinny dipping in the creek that ran through the woods behind his house. Sometimes they would jump in his truck and have make-out sessions in the woods. They got drunk on her 18th birthday, and that night they gave each other their virginity at a motel outside of Springfield. He didn't remember much about that night, other than that it made him feel better than he had ever felt in his life. But that night also made him feel a little guilty. He thought he had done something wrong. After all, she was his cousin. Sure, they were cousins, but still. He loved her, but part of him couldn't go back to that night. He remained close to her, but something had changed. That's when he got together with BJ. MJ was upset, but she understood. They remained the closest of friends, but always wondered what could have been. He married BJ, but MJ remained single. He always wondered why, but never asked. It was still early, so he decided to call his mother. There are times when a guy just needs to talk to his mom, and this was one of those moments. He called, and she invited him to breakfast with biscuits and gravy, which BJ never knew how to cook. She served him a huge portion along with a cup of coffee and a large glass of milk. He loved her biscuits and gravy and ate it like it was his last meal. Thanks, Mom, he said. It was great. She smiled as she watched him eat. 
I'm glad you liked it, son, she said. They exchanged news about the latest events around the house. Now tell me what's on your mind, she asked after a while. Is it your wife? Yes, I'm afraid so, he said. What is she doing, son? Is she cheating on you? she asked. Yes, he does, Bo said. He told her everything that happened and everything he had learned so far. His mother was not happy and shook her head. I knew this girl was going to be in trouble, she said. Bo, you didn't see her while she was in the military, but she changed a lot when she went to college. She was always going on spring break and stuff, doing God knows what. Someone once told me that she was even featured on one of those girls in Madness videos where she did a dirty dance on stage with another girl. I didn't see that video myself. Then someone said that she was seen having sex at some Anything Goes competition. Lake. Why didn't you tell me all this, Mom? He asked. Well, because as far as I knew, they were just rumors. You know how rumors are around here? She said. If I had seen those videos, I would have told you. I warned you that she had changed. Hell, everyone warned you, she said. I know, Mom, he said. I just didn't want to believe it. Have you talked to MJ about this yet? She asked. Yeah, she's the one I talked to first, Bo said. His mother nodded. Certainly. Of course. You know, I'm surprised that you and MJ didn't get along, especially after that night you spent in Springfield, she said. He looked at her, surprised. Did you know about this? He asked. She smiled. Of course I knew. I think everyone knew, she said. You've been like cousins from the moment you met. Bo lowered his head in embarrassment. Oh, don't be embarrassed, she said. Yes, but she's my cousin, he said. Second cousin, his mother said. Remember this? Second cousin. Heck, in this state you two can get married if you want. She gave him time to realize this. Do you still love her? Yes, I do, Bo said. She nodded. I know she still loves you too. Why do you think she's still single? She never told me, Bo said. No, I wouldn't say so. Only if you asked her directly, his mother said. Tell me something, Bo, honestly. If you could marry MJ, would you do it? He looked at her before answering. Yes, I would get married, he said. Well, maybe you should let her know about it. She said, I'm guessing you're going to divorce DB, right? Oh, that's right, he said. She shook her head. Okay, she said. You need to find a lawyer as soon as possible, today if possible. I'll find it, Mom, I promise. MJ is looking for a lawyer for me, and I will meet her for lunch, he said. Let me know how it goes, Bo, she said. And if you're serious about marrying MJ, let me know before you ask her, okay? I'll let you know, but why, she smiled. Let it remain a little secret for now, she said. Let me know what the lawyer says, okay? And I promise I won't say a word to anyone, not even your father. Bo felt much better. Talking to my mother always helped. She always made him feel better. Thank you, Mom, he said, kissing her on the cheek before leaving. For all. He walked out smiling for the first time since BD had dumped all this trouble on him. He looked at his watch and realized that he had just enough time to make it to his lunch meeting with MD. He had just made it to the cafe when she arrived. He parked and watched as she headed inside with her laptop. As usual, she was wearing denim shorts that showed off her long legs. It was as if he noticed her beauty for the first time. He got out of the truck and followed her inside. Seeing her at the corner table, he waved and joined her. Hey, Bo, how are you? she asked. Everything is fine now, he said. Well, you look like the cat that ate the canary. What happened? She asked. I had breakfast with my mother, he said. She nodded. I like your mom, she said, smiling. I bet she made you biscuits and gravy, didn't she? How did you know? He asked. I just know these things, she said mischievously. So what happened? He briefly recounted to her the events of last evening and this morning, then handed her the flash drive. She took out her laptop, booted it up, and inserted the flash drive when the computer was ready. She plugged in her headphones and started the video. As she looked, her face grew redder. When the video ended, she turned off the car and slammed the lid. 
that damn bitch, she exclaimed, returning the flash drive to him. I will kill her. I'm going to make an appointment with a lawyer, he said. I'm divorcing her. Okay, she said, handing him a piece of paper. I hope you don't mind, but I already made an appointment for you. No, I don't mind, thank you, he said. When is she? You need to go see her at exactly 1 p.m., MJ said. Her name is Jessica Hawkins. She hates cheaters and knows everything about Ryan Wallace. He seems to have a reputation as a womanizer. I also paid your fee. We shouldn't have, Bo said. I wanted to do it, she said. You deserve better, and I wanted to make sure you got it. Thank you, he said. But I'll still give you your money back. Don't worry about it, she said. Consider it a gift. She looked at her watch. I need to go back to work. What are you doing tonight? I have classes until 8.30, but nothing after that, he said. Do you mind coming to my place after, she asked. I don't mind, but it may be too late, he said. I don't care how late it is, she said. I want to know how the meeting with the lawyer went. He nodded. Okay, he said. I'll call you when I get out of school, okay? This will be perfect, she said, kissing his cheek. See you then. He watched her leave, then looked at his watch and realized that he had half an hour before his meeting with lawyer Jessica. After paying the bill for lunch, he got into his truck and drove to Jessica's office. He walked in and was greeted by a pretty secretary who smiled at him. I'm Bo Jackson, he said. I have an appointment with Miss Hawkins at one o'clock. The secretary looked at her calendar and smiled at him. Yes, I see it here, she said. Please take a seat, she will be out soon. He sat down and before he could open the magazine, Jessica entered the reception area. She was an attractive woman, but he could tell that underneath her professional exterior was a bloodthirsty shark. She looked at him before introducing herself. Beauregard Jackson, she asked, holding out her hand. He stood up and shook her hand. I'm Jessica Hawkins. Please come to my office. She showed him inside and offered him a cup of coffee, which he did not refuse. So, Mr. Jackson, she began, I understand you want a divorce, right? Yes, Miss Hawkins, I do, and please call me Bo. Everyone does it, he said. And please call me Jessica, she said. So, what do you want out of this divorce? I want to end this farce of marriage, he said. My wife is cheating on me. I have proof and there will probably be more by the end of the weekend. I want her out of my life. I want to keep the house, and I don't want to pay her any support. I see, she said. The house is in both names? No, he said. I bought it myself right after I got out of the Marine Corps, before we got married. It only has my name on it, and she works as a paralegal at Collins and McGregor and makes a lot more money than me. Jessica nodded. Do you have children? She asked. No, we wanted to wait a little. Now I'm glad we waited, he said. Collins and McGregor, you say? Jessica asked. And she works with Ryan Wallace? Yes, Bo said. He detailed his marriage over the past few months, telling Jessica what BD said. I also have a video. How did you get this video? She asked. It was filmed in my house with equipment installed by Mike Jackson, he said. I know Mr. Jackson, she said. He's worked for us before, and he's very good. Are you related? We're second cousins, Bo said. Jessica smiled. Of course, she said. I should have guessed by the last name. Okay, can I watch the video, she asked. He handed her the flash drive. It's quite graphic, he warned. It's no big deal, she said. I've seen this before. She inserted the flash drive and started the video. After watching it, she stopped the video. Do you mind if I leave it? She asked. No, he said. I have a master copy. Okay, she said. I'll start working on it. We will file for divorce on the grounds of adultery and will also ask for an order of protection prohibiting her from coming near you, your family, your place of work, your school, and your home. I ask that she not be given alimony since she makes more money than you, but be prepared to give her half of what is in your joint accounts. The house and your truck are in your name because you purchased them before marriage, 
so there won't be any problems with that. You say she'll be gone by Tuesday, so we'll give her the papers at work on Wednesday, if that's okay with you, she added. I'm fine with that, he said. What about Ryan? Well, alienation of affection lawsuits don't usually have much success, but I can try to piece together something about a conspiracy against you, she said. I might even get his firm to give him a good settlement based on what you gave me. If Mike provides more evidence, please pass it on to me. She handed him a business card, writing her personal number on the back. Call me any time if you need to. It doesn't matter what time it is. I have to finish the paperwork by Monday, so we'll talk then, okay? She asked. Bo realized that this was the signal to end the meeting. Thank you, Jessica, he said. If anything else comes up, I'll let you know. They shook hands and he left. On his way home, he stopped by Mike, who had just arrived at his office. Hey, Bo, Mike said, shaking the larger man's hand. Come in, get some coffee. They went inside and Mike poured Bo a cup of coffee. So, what do you have for me? It looks like these two cheaters are going to Chicago today, not tomorrow, Bo said. D.B. wrote down the name of the hotel and the room number where she will be staying, so here it is. He handed Mike a piece of paper. Mike wrote down the name of the hotel, then handed the paper back. I also received the video last night, but my lawyer has it now. It's no problem, Mike said. I can access it from the server I installed at your home. I'll take the video and take screenshots for my contacts in Chicago. She said something about a club on Friday, but I don't know what club she was talking about, Bo said. I think I know, Mike said. I did some research on Ryan Wallace. He is a constant womanizer who targets married women wherever he goes. There's a private club in Chicago that provides, shall we say, adult entertainment. Ryan has a habit of taking his lady friends there. Sometimes he makes them perform on stage. Not the most pleasant sight. I have a contact there who is a member of the club. I'll ask him to check and take a video. So who did you hire? Jessica Hawkins, Bo said. Mike nodded. Okay, he said. She's the best in the business. If something can be done, she will do it. Okay, if you don't mind, I'll contact her and let her know that I'm working on your behalf. Don't worry, Bo. We've got it covered. Just be careful. Thanks, Mike, Bo said. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. He left feeling that the day had been a success. He returned home early enough to study hard for his classes that night. After dinner, he received a call from D.B. Hi, he said, answering the phone. Hi, Bo, it's me, B.D., she said. We arrived safely at the hotel. I just wanted to let you know. We arrived quite early, I see, Bo said. Well, thanks for letting me know. Bo, I just want you to know that I love you, she said. You know that, right? Yes, if you say so, he said. I'll make up for it all when I get home on Tuesday, okay? She said. Okay, Bo said. Thanks for calling, I need to get ready for school. He ended the call without giving her a chance to say anything else. To hell with it, he thought. Now let her wonder what's going on. After finishing his classes that night, he called MJ to tell him he was moving out. I'll wait, she said, and I have a cold beer with your name on it. He smiled and drove to her house as quickly as possible. About half an hour later, he pulled up to her 14 by 60 foot trailer. It was a small place for most people, but it suited her well, and she always kept it clean. He walked up the covered steps and knocked on the door. She opened the door wearing a long T-shirt her perky breasts threatening to punch holes in the thin fabric. She stepped back and invited him in. Hi, Bo, she said. I have a beer with your name on it if you want. Absolutely, he said, wondering what was on her mind. He walked in and sat on the sofa, taking the cold beer from her. He opened it and took a long sip. She sat down next to him, her long legs tucked under her and her bare feet on the sofa. So, lay it out, she said. What did Jessica say? He told her everything and told her about Mike's plan to follow her in Chicago. So, what triggered all of this? He asked. It's been a long time since you invited me here. I just miss you, that's all, she said. 
but we work together every day, he said. Stupid boy, she said. This is work. I miss you outside of work. He smiled. In truth, he missed her outside of work too and told her so. He then remembered what his mother had told him earlier in the day. MD, I have a question and a confession, he said. She sat up and looked him straight in the eyes. Ask, she said. Why did you never get married, he asked. You're a beautiful girl, and I know you've dated some people, but you never got married. Yeah, I've dated a few guys since we were last together, she said. I even let some of them advance to first base, but that was it. As for marriage, the truth is that I have never met anyone who was suitable. Do you remember that night we spent in Springfield? She asked. Yes, he said. Well, that was the last time I was with a man, she said. Seriously? Asked Bo. She nodded. Yes, I know you felt guilty about what we did and thought it was wrong, and I respect that but the truth is that there was nothing wrong with what we did, she said. I wanted to sleep with you, and I wouldn't have done it if it was illegal or wrong. Now, what kind of confession do you have? Well, MJ, the truth is, after all these years, I still love you, he said. You were always there for me, always took care of me, and I still love you. She smiled. Do you know how long I waited to hear this from you? She asked. Yes, seven years. Well, guess what, cowboy? I still love you too. So what are we going to do about it? Bo suddenly felt the urge to kiss MJ. He leaned down and took her beautiful face in his hands. She met him halfway and they kissed each other, deeply, their tongues intertwined. I love you, Beauregard Jackson, she whispered, tears in her eyes. I've wanted to tell you this for so long. I love you too, Mary Jane Wilcox he replied, kissing her neck and face. I have always loved you and always will. Please stay with me tonight, she asked. I don't think we should do anything until my divorce is finalized, but I'll stay with you if that's what you want, he said. It's normal, she said. I just want you to hold me in your arms, kiss me and tell me you love me. I've been waiting for you for seven years. I can wait a few more months. He stayed the night with MJ, holding her warm, soft body all night. They hugged and kissed each other, whispered tenderness until late at night, when they finally fell asleep. Good morning, sleepyhead, she purred. When was the last time BD woke you up like that? I don't even remember, he said. Who is DB? he asked jokingly. She laughed. Come on, cowboy, she said. Let me make you breakfast. He stood up and went to the bathroom, realizing that he didn't have a toothbrush. So he took some toothpaste and used his finger to rub his teeth to get rid of the morning breath. As he got dressed, he walked to her small dining area, which actually took up half of her kitchen space. The trailer was nice, but it definitely didn't have enough room for two. Breakfast is ready, she announced, bringing him a large plate of biscuits and gravy and a side of bacon. There was already a large mug of coffee on the table for him. Sitting down at the table with her breakfast, she said, Eat it before it gets cold. He savored the breakfast she prepared and complimented her on her cooking. It's better than mom's, he said, pointing at the biscuits and gravy with his fork. She smiled at the compliment. Don't you dare tell her, MJ said. Bo shook his head. No problem. Seriously, this is fantastic, he said. Her face lit up at his compliment and her eyes sparkled. This is the first time I've cooked for a man, she said, and I'm glad it was you. After swallowing what was in his mouth, he reached out and kissed her on the lips. I'm glad too, he said. Seriously, this was the best breakfast I've ever had. I can get used to it. You better get used to it, she said with a playful smile. She looked at her watch. Damn, she said. I need to get ready for work. Will you come over after school this evening? He nodded. Sure, if you want, he said. I'll even bring my own toothbrush. You're welcome, she said, laughing. And yes, I want you here with me. Got it, he said. She hugged him before he left. I love you, Bo, she said. I love you too, MJ, he replied, kissing her. See you tonight, okay? Okay, she said. Take care of yourself. 
Bo felt on top of the world and didn't think about what BD might do to Ryan that day. He did some housework, studied, and went to class in the evening, packing his bag for the night. He didn't hear from BD that day, and she didn't leave a message. He wasn't surprised. MJ fed him meatloaf that night, and they cuddled, talked, and watched movies on TV. They fell asleep in each other's arms and woke up hugging each other on her couch the next morning. He took a shower while she prepared breakfast, and they decided to spend the day together. They stopped by his house, picked up fishing gear, and drove to the river, where they spent the day. Returning home with his catch, he received a call from Mike. I have a video from Friday night, Mike said. It's not very nice. I'll send it to you and Jessica. Thank you, Bo said, ending the call. MJ walked into his office as he played the video Mike sent. They both gasped at what they saw. Ryan took BD to a private club, where he introduced her to several men whom Mike identified as executives of the company with which the firm was negotiating. After the initial introductions, they ordered drinks and everything seemed fine for a while. This didn't last long as BD sat on one of the men's laps and started kissing him passionately. Ryan said something to her, making her smile. The camera panned around the room and recorded several other couples engaging in various sexual activities in the club. No wonder he was private. The camera panned back to BD and the three men she was with. MJ hugged Bo as he cried. How could she do this to me? He asked. I loved her, did everything for her. Forget her, said MJ. Drop her as quickly as possible. You deserve so much better. Returning to the kitchen, MJ cleaned the fish and cooked it. It was delicious, but Bo kept thinking about the video Mike sent. MD saw that he was in pain and tried to console him, but it was not easy. She even offered herself to him that night, but Bo wasn't in the mood. And according to him, two wrongs don't make one right. When you're ready, I'll be here she whispered, hugging him. The next day, Bo and MJ went to church with his mother, who invited them to lunch. Bo loved his mom's food, so off they went. He told her about Beatty's antics, causing her to shake her head. This girl is going to get into big trouble one day, she said. While the girls talked in the kitchen, Bo and his father watched the football game and drank 12 beers. When the game ended, everyone said goodbye. MJ took Bo's keys and helped him into the truck. You're not going home today, she said. She looked back at Bo's mother. Don't worry, I'll take care of him. MJ took them back to her place where they spent the night. The next day, she made breakfast before getting ready for work. Bo checked his email and noticed that he had received another video from Mike and a couple of audio files. He decided to watch them when he returned home. Are you coming over after school this evening? MJ asked before leaving. If you want, he said. I want to, she replied, kissing him. This will all be over soon, okay? He nodded. And remember I love you, she added before driving away. He went home and saw a message on his answering machine. DB called and seemed concerned that she couldn't get through to him. It's a pity, he thought. He watched the video Mike sent of BD having sex with Ryan and two men from the club. He couldn't watch the video for long and turned it off after a few minutes. The audio file confirmed that BD used her body to secure a contract with another company. This also confirmed that this was not the first time this had happened. True to her word, Jessica called and asked him to come to her office. He came and reviewed the documents before signing them. She also gave him advice on what to do with his bank accounts, so he closed the joint accounts, took half of the funds and put them in another account, and issued the other half as a cashier's check for DB. They didn't have credit cards, so there was no need to worry about that. He asked about changing the locks on the house and packing her things, but Jessica warned him not to do so until she was given the paperwork. She also warned him not to do anything physical towards BD or Ryan. He went to class that night and drove to MJ's house afterward. As she hugged him, she felt that he was nervous. Don't worry, Bo, she said. Soon this will all be over. She's coming back tomorrow, he said. I don't know if I can handle myself around her after all the crap she's done. You have to, she said. 
I know it will be difficult, but do it for us, please. Okay, he said. It took him a long time to fall asleep. The next day, MJ prepared breakfast, and they said goodbye. Be careful, she said. Call me if you need to, and remember that I love you. I love you too, he said, kissing her before she left. He waited until late in the evening before heading home. When he arrived, he saw BD's car in the driveway. He walked in and saw her on the couch in short shorts and a t-shirt. She raised her head and looked at him. Hi, Bo, she said quietly. Hi, he said. I see you arrived safely. Yes, she said, standing up. She went to the kitchen and grabbed a couple of beers from the refrigerator. Have you thought about what we talked about last week? She asked from the kitchen. I thought, and the answer is not just no, but hell no, he said. I'm sorry to hear that, she said. Why don't we sit down and talk about this for a little while? He took the beer from her and sat down, taking a sip. There's nothing to discuss, he said. I'm done with cheating and lying. Everything is over. No, it's not over, she said. In fact, everything is just beginning. What? he asked before suddenly feeling nauseous. Then everything went dark. When he came to, he was in a chair, his hands and feet were tied. He tried to move his arms and legs, but could not. He saw BD on the bed, naked, with Ryan standing at the foot of the bed. Well, the cuckold has finally woken up, Ryan said. Bo tried to address his wife. BD, don't do this, he said. Please, she laughed. I told you that one way or another you would be my cuckold, she said. Come on, it'll be fun. Really, Ryan? Ryan laughed, then punched Bo in the face. Bo looked at Ryan with hatred. Yes, it will be fun, but not for you, cuckold, he said, laughing. I'm going to take your wife right in front of you, you stupid hillbilly. Why? asked Bo. Are you such a big man that you need to tie me up? Release me from this chair and fight me like a man. Why are you doing it? Because I want to, asshole, Ryan said. And that's what DB wants, isn't it? he asked, looking at DB. Yes, she said. Come here, Ryan, show this redneck how a man has his woman. After they finished, Ryan stood up and walked over to Bo. Well, BD, what do you think? he asked. Should we beat him again? Or maybe just shoot the idiot here to get him over with? He took the gun from the dresser. BD got out of bed. No, don't shoot here, she said. Let's take him to the forest. I know many places where you can hide his body and no one will ever find it. Bo looked at her in shock. He couldn't believe that she really wanted him dead. However, no one in the room knew that Mike had logged into the server in Bo's office and saw the video stream from the bedroom. He called the local police, and by the time Ryan picked up the gun, officers were ready to break down the front door. The next moment they heard the door being kicked in and the police rushing into the living room. Ryan heard a noise and walked into the living room with a gun in his hand. Bo heard the officers order Ryan to drop his weapon, but he apparently did not comply quickly enough. Several shots rang out from the living room. The officers burst into the bedroom, guns drawn. They saw Bo tied to a chair and immediately grabbed BD, handcuffing her and ordering her to get dressed. The two officers released Bo from the chair and began cleaning his face. Are you okay, sir? asked one of the officers. Bo nodded. I have video of all this in my office, he told the officer. Please show me, the officer said. Bo led the officer into his office and turned on the video. The officer asked for a copy after viewing and informed DB that she was under arrest for conspiracy to murder, unlawful confinement and assault. Bo, please help me, she cried. He looked at her with hatred. Oh, hell no, he said. It's all over between us. By then the ambulance and coroner's van had arrived. Ryan's body, riddled with bullets, was carried out of the house while paramedics examined Bo. He did not feel the need to go to the hospital, but the officers insisted that he be seen by a doctor, and he agreed. By then Mike, Jessica, and MJ had arrived. Mike and Jessica spoke with officers. MJ held Bo's hand as the paramedics loaded him into the ambulance. 
I'll follow you to the hospital, she said. Bo was kept in the hospital overnight for observation and released the next day. MJ stayed with him the entire time, making sure he was treated properly. BD was served with divorce papers in jail and was denied bail because the judge considered her dangerous and a possible runaway. The divorce went faster than either Jessica or Bo expected, thanks to the allegations against BD and the videos Mike made. Even her trial was carried out quickly thanks to video recordings. After a few months, he was free of her, and she was preparing for a long sentence in state prison. Her firm settled the case out of court and paid out $2 million, as well as covering Bo's medical bills and legal fees. Apparently, they did not want it to become known that the database was set up for potential clients. Bo visited BD once at the state women's prison. He was sitting at the visiting table when she was taken out. She looked pale and thin in her orange jumpsuit. Clearly, life in prison had not been kind to her. She picked up the phone on her side of the divider. Hi, Bo, she said quietly. You look good. Hey, BD, you look orange, he said. She smiled. I don't think there's a chance for us to get back together, she said. He shook his head. Oh, hell no, he said. I just want to know why you did it. Honestly, I don't know why, she said. Ryan told me that all guys like it when their wives sleep with other men. I thought you'd like it. But why did you agree with his idea of killing me? He asked. She shrugged her shoulders. I think Ryan had such power over me that I agreed to whatever he wanted, she said. I'm sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Bo shook his head. You cheated on me, you drugged me, humiliated me, plotted to kill me, and now you want me to forgive you? He looked at the clock on the wall before answering. Not just no, but hell no. He got up. Have a good life, he said as he hung up, leaving her in tears. Bo returned to work, and his romance with MJ became even more passionate. A month after graduating from college, he visited his mother. Mom, I'm going to do it, he said. I'm going to ask MJ to marry me. Well, finally, she said. She went to her bedroom and returned a few minutes later with a small box. He opened it and saw his grandmother's engagement ring. He looked at his mother. Are you sure about this? he asked. Hell yes, she said. If MJ is the girl I think she is, she would be honored to wear your grandma's ring. Now, go and ask her if she will marry you. Bo kissed his mother's cheek, thanking her. He drove to the feed store and walked in to find MJ in her office. She wasn't there, but his uncle Les was. Where is MJ? asked Bo. Les pointed to the back of the building. She's in the backyard filling bags of feed, he said. Bo walked to the back of the building and saw her shoveling feed into a 50-pound bag. She had been working for some time and was covered in dust but to him she was the most beautiful creature on earth. He walked up behind her and noticed that the other workers had stopped and were watching him with smiles on their faces. She turned and knocked the dust off her gloves. Bo smiled, took out his grandmother's ring, and knelt in front of her. She looked at him in shock as he took her hand. MJ, will you marry me? he asked. She hugged him and kissed his face. Yes, you are a big fool. I will marry you she said. He put the ring on her finger. Isn't this your grandmother's ring? she asked. He nodded. She knew what it meant to his family and kissed him deeply. Do you want another ring? he asked. She shook her head. I'll be proud to wear your grandmother's ring, she said, and I'll be damn proud to be your wife. The workers clapped and shouted, which forced Uncle Les to go out into the backyard. What's that noise? he asked. MJ showed him the ring. Bo just asked me to marry him, she said. Les smiled widely and looked at them. It's about time, kid, he said, giving Bo a friendly punch on the shoulder. Come on, you two, get out of here. They got married a month later and went to Hawaii for their honeymoon. When she returned, Marilyn told him the good news. They were going to become parents. They looked around their cramped home. Do you want to stay here in this house? asked MJ. Bo shook his head. There were a lot of bad memories in that house, and it was simply too small for a family with children. Plus, he still had a good amount of money from the settlement 
and wanted the best for his wife and child. Oh hell no, he said. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one.